Welcome back, everybody, to part two with Henning. This conversation was super fun, and I kind of felt like it was appropriate to break it up into two spots. Um, I guess I could have put it up as two hours, but I don't know. It just felt it just felt more right to have two parts. But if you guys are enjoying the episode so far, uh, please consider subscribing. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, liking the video, commenting down below. If you guys are listening, um, anything you can do to interact, whether it you give the podcast a rating, it that stuff goes so far for me, and I greatly appreciate all of you that do. Um, that being said, if you'd like a little extra and you'd like to help me out a little extra too, uh, go on down to the show notes, check out the Patreon. Uh, as of right now, I just have one tier and that it will give you, you know, upcoming access to guests that I'm having coming on questions that you can ask the guests, et cetera. I'm sure we'll have more stuff in the future, but as of right now, that's the only one we got. If you guys have suggestions for the Patreon and what you guys would like for me to do, send them my way. I am all about it. I'd like to know what you guys want. But enough of all this. Let's get to the second part with Mr. Hitting Polly. Well, but at, but at the same time, I mean, you, you owe it to your audience to not only be yourself, but be as authentic and honest as you possibly can. You know, they're, yeah. you, you're, you're providing a service to them where, where you're giving them, you're showing them a product that they don't, they, they haven't attained yet. You know what I mean? We don't ever, we don't, we don't think about it anymore. I used to work at a Sam Ash too, a long time ago. And that was the thing. You would see the weekend crowd that comes in that goes to the music store every weekend to check out the new releases or whatever the new stuff was. Well, we don't really do that anymore. It's just all online. So now we're relying on people like yourself to give us a very unbiased, this is what this is, and this is the options that I can show you that it does, opinion before we make that purchase. You know, for most people. I, I also try to make sure that in some way, I'm maybe the the little angel on people's shoulder. For example, I I love Sweetwater. They're mm -hmm. my guys. There are the nicest guys. It seems to be a pretty honorable place, but they're an American shop, mm -hmm. which means it's very typical to do financing, financing, credit card, Sweetwater credit card, zero percent financing to blah blah blah. Yep, it's a it's. Look, I lived in the States for 10 years. It's the American way. Mm -hmm. Get things financed. Yep. Buy things that you actually cannot afford yet. Go into debt. And uh, I've been there. I, I, I had my credit cards and car loans and all that, and I know how easy it is to really get hit over heels. That's not the – is that the term? Yeah, I think that, that, yeah. That, that's a perfect analogy for it. So, yeah. And um, or... like when it's – you need a car to go to work. You need a house. You need shoes and, you know, hats with weird things on them, whatever that means. <laughs> string joy. Of of course. Really? <laughs> yeah. Is that string joy? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with those people? Uh, that, that's funny. What's um, his name? Uh, Blake Wylan came up with yeah, that. Yeah, Blake, Blake's yeah. a good guy. Yeah. So Blake's a good bloke. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, so I say in my videos, look, you do not need a guitar. Like nobody needs a guitar so bad or yeah. an amp or whatever that you would get into debt about it. For sure. And we all know how it is. Or if we don't know, then we have to say it. Yeah, 0%, blah, blah, blah. But then you miss one payment and then the rates go up and then you're in deep shit trouble. And if you couldn't afford that amp in the first place, the chances that you miss the payment are there. Let's oh, face it. Yeah, 100%. So, so do not, and I say this in my videos, when, when Sweetwater does like Guitar Month, whatever, I'm very vocal about I'm not supporting any kind of financing anything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not talking about it. I'm actually actively saying don't do that. And I let them know, and they're fine with that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying they're evil people because they offer financing. No, no. Um, but it's something that I don't think people should do to get a guitar. You know, save up, sell something else. But you you do not need to go into debt 
to buy yourself a guitar. No, no, it's definitely not worth the uh, worth the stress. I've I've had the same situation with actual, you know, things I did need and got you know out of control really quickly. I couldn't imagine them doing that for a guitar. So, I. I, I get the I get the sentiment, you know, because because here too it, it is the uh, land of instant gratification. We want it now, sort of mentality, which I understand. But at the same time, it's it's a it's a piece of wood with some electronics in it, or it's a box of metal with some electronics in it, or it's you know, it, it's it's nothing crazy that we have to have. Yeah, no, really not. No, but they are fun toys for people that like to make music and make creative things so we want the shiniest newest thing too at the same time it's kind of one of those duality moments that we have as musicians no or, i i get it it's yeah. it's it's fun i yeah. mean yeah the to, to, toys are fun yeah but you know whatever they are i mean sometimes we buy ourselves just things we know i mean i bought one of the stupid stupidest things ever overpriced probably by a thousand percent and I knew going in that it has major issues. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I did buy the Apple Vision Pro goggles. Oh, cool. Yeah, how do you like it? <laughs> oh, they suck. <laughs> yeah. I kind of gathered that off of that little bit leading up to but it. But the thing is, at least they're expensive. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, they're 4000 bucks. This is this is utterly ridiculous. Yeah. When I was in Miami for the metal cruise, I was sick in bed. But Carlos Asensio, uh, uh, we had an apartment together. He booked us a demo, and I was well enough to get out of bed. We did that demo, and I was like, "Oh, this is that's what that is." Yeah. And I saw all the the downsides. But that the whole time I'm like, "Yeah, but I kind of." Kind of still want them. Kind of still want them. Kind of still want them because they are the best looking high resolution image when it comes to goggles. Like okay, that. yeah. And it's there's amazing tech in there, but oh my god, did Apple fuck up in, in certain <laughs> respects? First of all, have I mentioned that they're four thousand bucks? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's asinine. Right. It's just the dumbest purchase ever, and there's no controllers. Mm -hmm. Everything is hand gesture. Yeah. Hand gesture is click. So tell me what kind of games you have where you can do this. None. Yeah, I was going to say. I bought 10 games. There are about 10 games for it. And all of them are the stupidest game mechanics. It's like there's a monkey <laughs> jumping. You just go jump, right. jump, jump. Yeah. Or there's a puzzle game and you pull things, but you can't even with a controller like on the on the quest, mm -hmm. the meta quest, a controller and you can really turn it and you have very fine control over yeah, what you yeah. do with things. Mm -hmm. When you hold something on the Vision Pro, you can't even really manipulate it. <laughs> it's just dumbassery. Um I wanted it for mirroring my Apple screen oh, to do I see. to do to do editing. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty phenomenal for that. Only that <laughs> right. it only does one screen. Okay. So for video editing, I need two. Yeah. It doesn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so you could, for example, sit on a lake. And and that lake that Apple has in there is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The water is moving. The environment is amazing. It's really beautiful. It's way better than the other system. Yeah. But then you have your keyboard in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. And you turn on that environment that envelops you. And then you can't see your keyboard. <laughs> so, so still, still a lot of bugs to fix out. It, it's thing. something that they kind of other systems, and I have this on the on the on the quest. You can be in an environment, but then you can actually make cutouts in that environment so yeah. that you can look into your actual room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Apple missed that. Yeah, yeah. Also, those environments on Apple, I think they got five. Oh. All the others, there's an island or whatever. It's like. Soon to come, like there's five, yeah, guys. Like there should be about a hundred. Oh, and yeah. I can just I can just buy more. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, sit in a cafe, whatever. You know, it's so stupid. Yeah. Um. Neither messenger, 
WhatsApp or Facebook is in there because, of course, Zuckerberg says, well, I, I'm going to have that on my Quest and not on uh, Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, no native YouTube app. Mm. There's nothing. Even the calendar, even the calendar and the Maps app are just ported from the iPad. They're not native oh, Vision Pro apps. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have, for some reason, an Apple Vision Pro keynote. So you can do presentations. Okay. There's no pages, meaning no word processing. <laughs> Literally, they don't even have a word processor for it. Uh, yeah. It's just so dumb. And with that input mode of clicky click and move your hands, mm -hmm. um, the graphics are ridiculous. You got an M2 processor. It's really powerful. The games could be amazing, but there's no first-person shooters. There's nothing where you actually... Have need different buttons and knobs and whatever, yeah, just or it's besides. a little joystick. <laughs> so why in the world wouldn't they just have game controllers yeah. like the Quest? Mm -hmm. Because have I mentioned the four thousand bucks? Yeah, right. Yeah. So sit on the couch and do the clicky click. I get that. It works. It actually works with where you're looking. It's eye tracking. So wherever you're looking, and you're clicking, and that's how you go through the menu. It's yeah. amazing. It works. 80% of the time. Hey, yeah. But why not? Oh, now I'm gaming. Here are my controllers. No. <laughs> so one of the apps that they have is Disney Plus. Okay. Fully yeah. native. That also means 3D uh, movies. Oh, cool. And I tell you yeah. one thing. You've never seen 3D movies like this because yeah. we experience them either on a TV with weird glasses or in the movies with weird glasses, right? Yep. Yeah. But here, no weird glasses. The screens are on your eyes. Yeah. You've never seen a 3D movie like this. Yeah, that does sound pretty pretty wild to say the On least. Disney Plus, you can sit on Tatooine, mm -hmm. and the whole sky is your movie. Oh, wow. It's, it's a trip. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. But get this. You're sitting there, and I, I took it on vacation for a week and watched it. Either you have, you have like, you just take your screen and you... I watched some reality TV shit... And put it over here, and here's my notes, and here's my whatever, and all floating in the room. And you could leave the room, go to the bathroom where, I don't know, you've got your notepad above the toilet. <laughs> you come back in the other room, and your, your screen is where you left it. It's pretty impressive. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're in this Disney Tatooine place, and you're watching a movie, and you're eating chips. Do you see where the problem is? <laughs> What's the move to eat chips? Yeah. Holding that little pinch. Right it's here. this. Oh, okay, so, yeah. So every time yep. you eat chips, the movie stops, you're moving the screen, <laughs> you're fast-forwarding, you're rewinding. It's like, Apple, what the fuck? So what's at the Apple store? I talked to the guy, and he's like, yeah, I mean, surely you can turn that off. I'm like, no. Because if you turn it off, how do you turn it back on? Right, right. Um. So all I can say is, at least it cost me a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but long, 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 long story short of me bitching about the stupid product. Sometimes we want something stupid and we know it's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Some Somebody wants that old guitar that's all scratched up and you, they know they can only play three chords. And they know it's probably going to hang on the living room wall yeah. to impress the guitar player buddies that come over mm -hmm. but makes them happy maybe not even that to me sometimes if i go back to a product page over and over and over again and I ask myself should i buy this should i buy this in the case of the vision pro for half a year I said no 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 but the thing is i always went back i'm like the only way to turn that off is spend four thousand bucks on not being bothered by it anymore. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, but boy, was that a stupid purchase. Yeah, well. There, there's no way in the world to justify that. Uh, it's, not as, it's not as stupid as a, uh, as a Berkeley, you know, degree these days, so. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's, 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 very, that's very true. Plus, those I might be able to sell to some idiot for maybe 3000 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Might, might make a little bit of money back from, you know, the yeah. money you've the lost. The Berkeley degree, it. that's... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. You, can't, you can't sell that. No, no, not at all. No, no, we, li we like the toys. Yeah. Um, for me, 
I don't get that excited anymore about guitars and amps and all that stuff because I have more than I would ever need to actually make music. Sure. Uh, I've got the, the nicest shit really that's on the planet from like the Nick Hubers to the Shabbats to the Heritages and everything and Sully's and it's all here. Uh, d- d- pedals. I mean, I'm selling a lot of pedals now because what do you what do you want with them? Um, with the amps I have, how many drive pedals do I really need? None. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So drive pedals make sense if you have one, two, three, four, five amps and you need them to be pushed in a different directions. But if I have a rev, I don't need a drive pedal in front of it. I mean, with the Plex, yeah. Oh, there, Friedman Plex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could potentially put a drive pedal in front of it. But it could also go to an amp that has more gain. Oh, right, yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, of course, keeping a Tube Screamer and a Clone Clone and all that stuff. Uh, but... Got to have the main food groups. You got to have the main stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm 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 moving on a lot of things. I'm moving on a lot of amps and guitars. But there's always so much stuff coming in that once in a while there's something that you're really looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but oftentimes it's like, oh, here's the next guitar. Oh, that amp. Oh, I box that tomorrow because it it does become part of the job. Sure, sure, um, sure. But with. Uh, and of, of course, I don't buy any of it anymore. It would be stupid for me to buy a guitar because I want it when I have more guitars than I could ever use and it's all high and shit. Yeah. So just because I might think, oh, that's a cool guitar, I'm not going to spend 3000 bucks on it because it'll just be another guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, I do spend money on the cameras. Sure. Oh, of course. Yeah. Because that is, for me, I don't know how much fun that is really, but it's like, can that improve something I do? Can that improve a bit of workflow? Can that be this much more professional and just give me that last 2% efficiency look, whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's really what it's about is once once people get that momentum going is maintaining it, you know, and the only way you can really do that is by pushing that needle a little further every day, even if it's just by a little bit. Like you said, just that extra little percent. You know, to make your videos just a little bit better, you know, it, it, it pays to invest back into that sort of stuff. The the best investment I could do in my videos is hire someone to sit in front of the camera <laughs> that uh, <laughs> knows more, is better looking, and all that stuff. Absolutely. But can't, can't afford someone. Right. <laughs> so no. it'll be me. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and that that's fair. But, I mean, if that's the worst thing you got going for you right now, I think I think you're doing pretty okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know. Let's see how long I can do that job. How long people are willing to to click on videos? Well, that's fair. It's 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 a pretty bad month right now. The stats are really bad. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's just a month. Whatever, you know. I'll just keep doing what I do. Just keep soldiering on, as they say. Yeah. Which is not necessarily fair saying that to someone in the army because what I do is sit here and make stupid guitar videos. You know, I didn't actually soldier on ever. Oh well, it's it's just a turn of phrase. We we I don't I know exactly what you didn't want to offend anyone that actually did the job. Oh well, speaking from somebody that did, they can get over it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need for be mad about some something stupid like that. Well, let's let's before we before we wrap this up. Where first of all, let's get your plugs out of the way. Where can everybody find you? And then maybe what what do you have like anything big you can talk about? I know there's a few things in the work, but anything big you can talk about? Maybe in the next year, year and a half coming up for you? No, just really just moving on. Yeah, same I mean, old, same old, same old. Next year, hopefully, we're doing Fort Rodriguez Street again for the seventh time. Yep. Um. That's my event where YouTubers and, and brands come together. We've we've got it dialed in now. It's it's really gotten better every year. It's always a nightmare to get the brands together. And all, every time the brands leave and they're like, they're so happy. And I got 20 super happy brands. And then it feels like, oh, finally, now people are getting it. And right. then I'm talking to brands and it's always like, yeah, I don't want to. Mm, yeah, I can't do it. Oh, I don't have the people. And so maybe getting 10 brands is relatively easy. And then the last 10 is just, I must have talked to about 80 brands. Yeah. I was going to guess at least a hundred, 
but maybe I was just shooting a little too far. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, maybe that, uh, including trade shows, definitely. Yeah. But actually, like one on one, like FaceTime conversations, yeah, probably 80. And uh, so many YouTube channels, it just it drags out, it kills so much time. Yeah. Now that I have the three video studios here rigged up and ready to go, and and we have the whole feeding people, transporting people, all that is dialed in. Yeah. But still getting the branch, that's a nightmare. Yeah. So but I mean I think that's uh, that's happening again. Um am I going to Nam? I don't know yet. It'll be cool because Marshall's gonna be at Nam after years and years and years. Yeah. And now I have friends there, actual people that I would like to see. Mm-hmm. But it costs me about three thousand bucks. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't get that back from anyone. No. No. It uh it costs me about if I don't get sick, it's a week and a half. If I get sick, it's three to four weeks, and the chances of getting sick is, Very I'm going to say 90%. Yeah, yeah. It's almost a guarantee. So, yeah. honestly, if I can't work for three or four weeks, that's thousands. Yeah. That's, honest, so that means 3,000 there. So, I'm, if I get sick, I'm out 10 grand. Oh, yeah. And that that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Because if I can't make videos for, for a couple of weeks, that's a lot of money that, that, that I'm leaving on the table. Um, and that also means products that were already here to be filmed. I have to make excuses to companies. Will I lose jobs not going to Nam? Maybe. Mm. So I have to weigh that yeah. weigh that up. But I'm I'm t- I told myself I'm not going to book anything until maybe late December. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do cause... it last minute. Mm-hmm. And if my schedule in terms of videos that I need to do looks pretty full. And I have stuff to do. Then I might just skip it. It's yeah. gonna hurt to see my friends there and everyone having a gay old time, but I will get sick. And it, also, it's it's Anaheim. Yeah, that's a horrible place. <laughs> have you been to Anaheim? No. Uh, funny, another fellow podcaster asked if I was going to Nam this year. I've never been to a Nam, and I'm really debating on it whether or not. I'm kind of leaning not towards right now, but I mean, have you seen any American city that's in rectangular blocks and has yeah. strip malls? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a nightmare. I've heard the horror stories of the the Anaheim, you know, city district. I mean, Anaheim is nice. Yeah, it's relatively clean and all that, mm-hmm. but it's you might have heard of it. There's a Taco Bell. Yeah. And after that, there's a Carl's Jr. Yeah. And then there's a Wendy's and an Arby's. And there's a Walgreens. I mean, does that sound somehow familiar? Right. It's indistinguishable from where you live. Yeah. You know, downtown Nashville different. But I mean, the, it's just such a sad place. I yeah. almost immediately, landing in LA, get depressed. Ah, I, I, I can understand that. And I'm... Um, then you go there, stress, 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 stress. You meet friends, hugs. Yeah, friends get sick from the hugs. So I don't know yet. Um, I might, I might skip it because it's money, and I'm at the, I'm in the position, luckily, where I've done so many nams and so many trade shows that I do have companies riding me now. Yeah. Yeah. Still have to keep the relationships going. Still have to say, oh, you've got this product coming out. I saw that. But it is easier now. And I have companies saying, oh, we got this thing coming. Um, Are you in? Okay. So it's not, I don't have to kick in doors anymore. Most doors are open. Right. It would be good to groom those relationships to keep the doors open. But to the tune of 3000 bucks and getting sick. For you from Nashville, what, that's like, 300 bucks for a flight? Yeah, probably somewhere in there. Yeah. It, it's not going to be expensive on my end what's, whatsoever. <clears throat> well, plus four days, five days in Anaheim. Yeah. At about 150 a night. Yeah. If you're lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you're out of grand, period. For sure. Um, Because I, I need usually, you know, let's say six days hotel thousand dollars minimum flight and rental car yeah because it's la you can't do anything without a car for sure so 
yeah, I I don't know. I'm going to Guitar Summit next week. That is the best trade show when it comes to guitar. It's also not loud. It's a quiet show. Uh, again, we'll see in December where I'm at. I'd like to go for the friendships. Well, sure, but... Don't want to go for Anaheim or... If, if it's not necessary business-wise, mm-hmm. it would be a bad decision, as bad as the Vision Pro. <laughs> no, no, not, not, not as quite. bad, but not not as bad. You're, you're, nothing, get, you're getting up there, though. Nothing is that bad. It would be a bad business decision to go just to see some friends for three thousand bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and the and the content there that you're you're going to be making will be the typical that you always see when creators go to Nam. Not not you specifically. I'm just saying everybody in general. You know, it's like oh. yeah, yeah. I I used to do seventy videos at Nam. Yeah. I was on the NAM floor at 7 in the morning, three hours before the vendors showed up, mm-hmm. and left at 7 at night. And then I was like, oh, let's, come, let's go to dinner. I'm like... I'm going to bed. <laughs> I, I yelled in a microphone for 12 hours straight. Yeah. Uh, I, I, there's no chance. Yeah. Um, and I did that four days straight. So I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. I'm filming nothing at Summit, zero, not one post, just talking to people. And at NAM, I might... I would maybe make five to ten videos... Uh, with a little, you know, DJI Pocket, much, much smaller setup. I'm not doing that anymore. But it's, I don't know. Uh, what else? So if that that's coming up in terms of products, I don't know. Uh, I think Marshall's got good stuff coming out. Okay. It's, it's still not the, oh, now they've arrived in the modern age with DI solutions and stuff like this, but... Uh, they got something in a lower priced range, which is good, and they got something kind of up in the boutique range, which okay. is gonna make collectors and diehard fans massively happy. They're gonna freak about it, and it's gonna be very good, but also in the you know, very exp- yeah, th- three to four thousand range. So really, right. only for the for the blues lawyer collector, not for the not necessarily for the gigging musician. Sure. Sure, sure. But it's, they're back, they got something cool, and I know they're going to follow up with modernizing the range. I mean, they, they have to. Yeah, yeah. Most, well, most importantly, what I've seen at Marshall were good people, the family is still involved, everyone's energized and passionate about what they're doing. They have much more free reign to just follow their ideas instead of when before it was like, well, can't do that because that's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna sell well, or uh, our dealers told us the price points wrong and all these business bullshit decisions. Right. Um, now it's like, we really want to do this Mm -hmm. because that would be dope. And then like, okay, do it. Yeah. And that's, that's how it should be. Yeah. And they have, uh, financial input from, the big company who sells, you know, the Bluetooth speakers and stuff. So there's money to be pumped into there. It it seems they're going somewhere. Okay. We've been there before with Gibson when JC took over and That's true. lied to the world and said, we're cool now. Yeah. And then Ignacy said, oh, by the way, play authentic or we sue you. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so that, that went south really fast. Yeah. Mr. I sell jeans. Yeah. <laughs> um, he literally just lied. He knew that was coming, and he just lied to everyone. Oh, we're cool now. Yeah. No. No, yeah. you're not. Yeah. You're, you're even bigger fucking. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to work with you guys, so reach out and let us know. And We want to work with you guys. Oh, yeah, we want to work with you. Uh, you can license <laughs> our guitars showing up in your movies. Yeah. Oh, how about... Ah, what's the word? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... I talked to the new Marshall CEO, mm-hmm. and the, the story is similar. It's like, he said, I, I was a professional snowboarder. <laughs> okay. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know about amps. Yeah, of course. He worked for Vans, Adidas, and the North Face. Okay, yeah. So, well, I mean, classic amp companies right there. <laughs> classic amp companies. <laughs> I mean, just, he knows marketing. Yeah. yeah. He knows billion-dollar companies. He knows big business and Marshall lifestyle products. Sure. Is big business. Yeah. 
if he realizes that the amp company needs to be there so he sells headphones, which he does, that's good. So be involved enough so that they can do what they need to do. Give them enough money. Yeah. But don't be so involved that you're in ignorance about the amp world gets in the way. And I think that's kind of the line that he's walking on right now. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. I don't think, absolutely don't think that they'll they'll walk in Gibson's shoes and start issuing cease and desist orders <laughs> for uh, Marshall clones and everyone who's got an 800. And I don't think they're going to go and, you know, call Dave Friedman and say, stop doing that. Right, right. I suggested, I, when I talked to, you know, 80-year-old Terry Marshall, mm -hmm. who literally was there when they made the first amp, who, oh, by the way, I saw. I saw the very first Marshall. They have That's, it in a case. Wow. That's pretty, yeah. literally, the first Marshall that was ever built. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that was amazing. Um, and I said, nobody knows who you guys are. Mm. Why don't... Why don't you go on Toe Talk with Dave Friedman? Yeah. Dave talks to other amp builders all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm pretty sure he would like to talk to Terry Marshall. Yeah. I would I'm assume I'm pretty so. sure that there's a guy in the, in the factory. He doesn't play guitar. But he's worked at Marshall for 35 years. Jim Marshall showed him how to build caps. He gave us the tour. Yeah. Steve, good guy. I'm like, I'm pretty sure Dave would like to talk to Steve. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. You know? No questions asked. I mean, the stories that guy can tell. Absolutely. So, I'm like, show these people behind the brand. Because right now, who we see is the CEO. Yeah, yeah. We need to see that Steve is still there. Mm -hmm. And that Adam runs the studio. And that Terry Marshall, 80 years old, still shows up and says, I want to see the new stuff and sign off on it. Yeah. So, I'm like, if we see those people... Then Mr. CEO man can run the business. It's all good. But I think that would instill trust in the company. But of course, the problem is, here's a multi-million slash billion dollar company. Don't know how much they're worth. And any of those decisions would, of course, have to go through global marketing strategy yeah. Yeah. hands. Yeah. I don't think they could, because it is the Marshall name, just make the decision, oh, yeah, uh, Ter Terry's going to go on a uh, on tone talk. I think that would have to be discussed, and yeah. that could, that could be the <clears throat> the the pebble on the road that they trip over. Maybe, possibly, yeah. Uh, there's there's a lot of red tape, I'm sure, at that level of. I that told company. them that's what they need to do. Just a rooch. She's R and D. Mm -hmm. That's a. I'm going to say younger. I don't know how, she, how old she is. 30? Okay. Mid 30s, maybe. British Indian lady. Super smart. Super driven. I think she's R head of R&D amps. I, I said, Aruj, we need to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Said, she, she's, she's been there for two years. Yeah. New blood. That's not a bad thing. I'm like, we want to know who's, who's behind this. This new wave. Right, right. She's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the one to go in front of the camera. I'm like, yes, exactly you are. Yeah. You know, maybe not with me, but go go, go with Dave. So, but then, of course, that is a competing company. And for Dave, that's not an issue. Yeah, right, right. He right. does it all the time. But the question is, is it for Marshall? So even though they're not Gibson and they're not going to go and sue everyone who does Marshall-type products, because it's way too late for that. Yeah. But can you imagine they tried that? They play authentic? Imagine they now did a play authentic video. <sighs> yeah. I, I I don't know. That that advice that you gave is probably the best bet. I mean, the, the more personable you are with these large companies, the more people. It, it's similar to, like, if you, if you were to reach out to, to a smaller boutique builder, like, you're actually talking to the individual itself. Like, you're not going to, you're, you're obviously not going to have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with heads of R&D or people that have worked there for 30 years, but giving them the availability to be online, say their piece, tell their stories, you know, 
not not just sitting on tone talk pushing Marshall, you know what I mean? But just having a conversation with Dave would yeah, be yeah. phenomenal. You know? Um and showing the passion behind it, showing the people. What I loved, it's really not what I thought, was how small is the wrong word, but how simple the whole operation still is. Really? It's a fact. It's a factory. Sure, yeah. yeah. But you come into the entrance. It's a big room. Mm -hmm. Kind of an aged desk on the left okay and there's a message from aruj um which i like i'm just talking to her now yeah She's such a lovely lady um and you know uh nice nice woman uh at the at the um what's it called the check-in desk whatever so there's some some couches but they clearly haven't been updated in 10 years or 20. <laughs> okay yeah and there's a there's like a, a shelf with like you know all these best award in whatever and nam award and all these things but it really looks dated not kind of like oh we throw that in there mm -hmm. and it's nice but it's not I, I i think i could best describe it as it feels like it needs to be dusted off a little bit <laughs> fair enough yeah and and the sun clearly has hit it for years so it's all a little bit yeah you know what i mean just yeah Kind of bleached from the sun a little bit. So, and then you walk, like in a, in a big mansion, like up two steps, mm -hmm. and up on the balcony, let's call it, there is, I don't know, probably a good 10, 20 million in amps, <laughs> because they got everything there. That's yeah. what they call their museum. Mm -hmm. uh, where other brands would build a build, Gibson would build a building, put everything behind glass, put the clothing and the pick and the guitar from the player next to it, right? Right. And make it a pay-to-get-in thing. Sure. No, it's all just there, sitting and stacked on top of each other. <laughs> oh, there's Jeff Beck's amp. Oh, there's one Jeff amp that we made for Jeff Beck. It was supposed to be a signature model. We never did it, but it's one of three. Here's Zach Wilde's amp. Um, here's Ingvi's amp. Here's a replica of Jimmy's amp, but this is actually an original blues breaker. Here's the first Marshall amp ever that was right. behind glass. Well, that's Here, fair. here's one. Here's one from the second batch that someone had on eBay for three hundred thousand, and someone wanted to buy it, but then they decided not to do it, and they gave it back to us to display. It's okay. Like, so, <laughs> and there's you know, uh, uh, Lemmy space and all these things, and there's. A spinal tap amp going to 11. <laughs> nice. But the thing is, yeah. this is literally all just sitting there out in the open, stacked on top of each other. You can just go grab it and move it around. And it's not, it's devoid of arrogance. Right. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. There's history, there's weight, there's love for these players, there's personal relationships oozing out of. That tour that Steve gave us, mm -hmm. it's in the video that I made. I made the video, video of that. And, but it's not arrogant because if it was arrogant, um, now, now I'm getting, <laughs> that was marketing Marshall now. Yeah. I think they watched the video. I said, you know, check it if I said anything wrong in there. Um, so there's no arrogance. Mm -hmm. There's no Look at all these things and look how shiny and look how expensive, like, like the Gibson garage, you know, that's like this. In, and now we're going to sell this replica, which isn't a real guitar. It's just a replica of something that's worth a lot for 50,000 bucks. And you can also have dinner with Kirk Hammett, who, by the way, is the third owner of this damn thing and plays it the worst. <laughs> right. Uh, right. None of that is there. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Uh, I felt none of that. I felt we make amps. None of this has been updated in a while. Let's go to the studio. There are the new amps on the floor. Just all hands-on, honest, smaller and with less 
we're Marshall. We can. None of that. Zero. Right. I felt I would have expected to get massive gorilla pushing up your chest kind of a thing. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because that's what I always heard from them. Oh, we don't want to work with influencers. We don't need this. We've got artists. Well, it seems that those people are gone. Okay. Also, the artists are gone. A well, lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. And the people there gave a small YouTube guy a whole day, listened to, showed things around, talked with me as if my opinion matters the tiniest bit to them. Yeah. Um, well, that, that right there tells me more than anything they could say in a press release. You know what I mean? The fact that they invited you out and spent the day and were honest and genuine with you with, from what I'm hearing from you with pretty much the entire interaction you had with them. It was just pleasant from beginning to end. Yeah. I could talk about the dead pigeon. <laughs> That's how the day started. <laughs> and I was like, I hope this is not an omen for yeah. where Marshall. There was just a dead, I want to say decapitated, but definitely disemboweled pigeon yeah. <laughs> outside. And during half of the day, nobody felt it their responsibility to pick it up. Oh, okay. So apparently more cars were going over it, and it was just getting more and more gruesome. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then we were standing in there, and the the lady at the at the uh, desk in the front was like, "I, I, I called someone. <laughs> I mean, give me a shovel and I'll do it." And that also showed me it's like these are very normal people. They're very down to earth, average British working class people that are just into amps. And it, it really was the complete opposite of what I saw and heard from Marshall for all these years. Yeah. So either my view was skewed because of how they presented themselves, or it's the new people. But if that continues, that attitude continues, then I think it could be good. Yeah. Well, my, my hopes are up for it because I've, I've always really enjoyed – Marshall amps that I've owned and played through, you know what I mean? But I, I always had that kind of stigma too, that you're, you're talking about with this, uh, not vocalized arrogance that they've kind of always perceived, at least to me with, with the Marshall brand, you know, not, not saying good, bad, and different. That's just always been kind of my opinion of them. They've always been kind of one of those unobtainable companies, unless you're the biggest guy ever to play their amps. You know what I mean? You can uh, feel it, it, it really, it felt like, yeah, we had Slash and, and all these guys. I, I mean, <laughs> apparently I said that they're, uh, it's amazing that I'm actually getting texts, um, that their uh, CEO is a Swiss and uh, apparently he's French. And she said, well, but not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can... I can fix that in, with the title in the video. And I usually don't have companies check my videos ahead of time. And anything I say in there is, of, of course, what I want to say. Yeah. But because there's unreleased things, and I kind of hinted at them very broadly, but I want to make sure that that's okay. Because obviously for them, the new releases is a, is a big thing. For sure. Um, no, it, uh, yeah, they could be the most arrogant people in the world because look at who they work with. And uh, it felt like, any player counts. Mm -hmm. I, it, that that's that's. They didn't say that. But that's a feeling. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we want. That's what we we want to know that we're part of the club when we buy any Marshall. Yeah. And not just slash counts and uh, Jeff Beck and this Hendrix dude. No. Um, I think. I think that's who those people are, that any player from the beginner to the big guy on stage counts. Of course, they can't support every player. No, 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 no. But I think they have respect for all of them, and that's what, that's what we demand. That's what we want. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's, such a, it's such a small shift that you have to do just mentally to put yourself in that position of we're providing this for the customer. 
You know what I mean? From that business mindset to, hey, we need to sell, you know, refrigerators and headphones. But, you know, we want to build great amps for players. You know, that that's the mindset that I, I'm hearing from you that you, you saw from them, which is really exciting. The, to the two big, more expensive things that are coming, are they going to make Marshall fans very happy? Yeah. The, the, you see them and you're going to go like, yeah, I want that. <laughs> I want that. I want that very much. You, well, you, you'll have to save money. Don't buy it on your credit card. Yeah. But, no um, financing. It, yeah. But uh, it, no, it definitely, uh, I haven't heard him because we didn't have time. We had to go to the cheese barge because, okay, there's <laughs> playing amps or there's eating ridiculous amounts of cheese. And got to have your priorities. Straight. Yeah, you definitely do. You know, I, I, I'd probably go for the cheese myself, especially if, in, in that area. If you're ever in London, there's a barge on the Thames. Mm -hmm. There's a boat. You have to have a reservation. And you get cheese stuff. Okay. And they have curry cheese curds. They're these cheese bits. And they're like fried cheese with some curry on them and honey. It's that the most divine thing you've ever eaten. I, it sounds like it. We were five guys. Each of us had a plate. Then we had a lot more cheese. Mm-hmm. And then we also ordered a sixth plate of the chicken. <laughs> like, absolutely mind blowingly amazing. Yeah, yeah. We had, it's just, you know, playing the new Amps or going to the cheese barge, I, we picked cheese barge. Hey, I, I, I'm sure seeing them there, though. And it's, it's like you said, though, too. It's, it's more about the people that you're working with, not the actual products themselves. You know what I mean? So going, it, it was, it was really more about a meet and greet and getting to know the people. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind that, uh, that they can make good products. Look, that whole studio line, the 20 watt JCM Jubilee and the, uh, the, the, the Plexi, that 20 watt Plexi I've had here for a long, long time in Europe. That's 850 bucks. In the US, it came down now to 11 something, which is more expensive. But that's an absolutely fantastic amp that does everything you want the Plexi to do. Uh, and I, I, Glenn was here and he played through. He's like, holy shit, that's like early Judas Priest. That's like, that's, that's my 80s. Right. And it was just cranked up. Like, you know, you just dime it and you're there. Mm -hmm. um, his mind was blown, and that's when, when he started looking for plexis and made a video about a Bogera wannabe plexi. I don't know why he did that. Um, oh, yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, yeah, but um, th that was inspired by him playing that plexi here. Now they've got a JTM version of that, which I haven't played, but they want to send to me. Those are fantastic amps, and they are not very expensive. So you can expect when they're building something, you know, in the 3000 plus area that uh, has some special, you know, bells and whistles i don't think it's going to be bad y yeah yeah <laughs> i know from a very prolific rock player in la who tested it who said it's hot shit oh well i mean that's that's more of an endorsement than just play authentic for sure <laughs> <laughs> God, I would, I would literally <laughs> pee my pants if they came out with some spokes guy that they hired who's just an arrogant prick, hashtag <clears throat> easy, uh. um, and then just go like, you know, there's all these clones out there and these wannabe marshals, but go ahead and play authentic. <laughs> also, here's a snowboard. Right. Oh, God, that would be so... F I mean, at this point, it would be funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Because now I'm the idiot who went there. Right. <laughs> who's speaking for them, who's saying these are good people. And if that goes south, then it's my reputation on the line. Yep. Yep. Oh. Well, I don't think so. I, I, I was going to say, j judging off of what, what you're saying, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue for Marshall. I, I, I could be wrong because <clears throat> I don't know anything, hardly at all. But. The, the the way the, the conviction in your voice about how they treated you and the time you had there it it sounds like they're on the up and up for sure yeah, yeah. no I, I think so too yeah well um i think that'll probably put us about at a good time um i really appreciate you taking the time and sitting down and talk to me i know you're a super busy guy and i'm, I'm happy you were able to make it work man 
Yeah, any any time. I didn't have to help the Russians with the fence, so that was good. Hey, that's plus. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to assume dinner has been done for an hour. <laughs> and uh, I didn't have to deal with the katana, uh, so that's good. That, that <laughs> gave me a reason to procrastinate. But tomorrow, and there's a product release on the 24th, something very big, so that I'm going to have to do that. And, you know, just day 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 to day guitar stuff oh yeah well but keep... I'm, I'm not i'm not complaining i get up every day and i never thought oh i gotta get up and do this thing now never right so and i know there's about seven billion jobs that i could think of where i would think that oh, where, where i wouldn't want to get out of bed for sure for yep. sure well, I will have everything for Henning link down below in the show notes. You guys can go down there, check out all of the socials um, stuff down there for me as well. That'll be well below all of Henning's stuff too. So check out his stuff well before you check out anything I'm doing. But for Henning and for all of you guys, we will check you guys next week on Man the Helm podcast.